I'm a public educator based in Canada, and it's my job to go into schools and workplaces and talk to people about how to prevent sexual violence. And I um, got a gig with the Royal Military College of Canada, which is a military post-secondary institution. And I was tasked with training all of the students on how to prevent sexual violence. And it was a truly horrendous experience. I was sexually harassed. I was harassed generally throughout all of the sessions with all of the students. I was catcalled at one point. I had a cadet at one point look at me and say, I might have listened to you if you weren't a woman and a civilian. I filed a complaint with the institution uh, and they took five months. They actually investigated me and eventually concluded that I had been in fact harassed and they apologized. But in the meantime, the cadets and their supporters went online, smeared me, threatened me. Uh, and when I eventually went public later on when my story came out and when I had my apology letter, uh, I received, basically was just drowning in threats, threats of death threats, rape threats. Um, I had people attend my talks and threaten me to my face. Um, I got a threatening phone call. Um, it was nonstop uh, for several months and it's still, it's been two years now and it still follows me wherever I go. And now I'm targeted as a, a feminist in Canada. And so I'm targeted anytime I'm in the news about any issue related to gender equity issues. I, it's a, I always struggle with my reactions to it because whenever I receive a threat, even now, intellectually, I tell myself that I'm safe, that I'm okay, that I have protection, that I can go public with what I'm experiencing and that I'll be fine. But you, I can't, I have yet to master changing my gut reaction and that fear right away and that anxiety that builds up when you get those threats and then wondering, is this person going to show up at a talk or is this person just using their keyboard courage to say things online they would never say in person. Um, and so it's a struggle all the time with trying to rationalize the behavior for me and telling myself, okay, is this a legitimate threat or is this something that I should just screen grab and file away? Uh, and it's impossible to know. And that constant, the unknown and the constant sense of anxiety um, can be really hard to deal with, um, especially when you're not surrounded by people who see it for what it is. So, so often I hear things like, just tune it out, or it's just some loser in his mom's basement, he's not actually gonna do anything about it. Um, and so then you end up sort of doubting yourself and feeling like, oh, am I making a big deal out of nothing? Or, and so then you can't even actually see everything from a rational lens because you're either coming at it so emotionally or from this, space of denial almost because it's it's no one wants to imagine their life that way it's not certainly not the life i imagined for myself yeah i now i when i am in good mood i joke about how i'm kind of the feminist boogeyman in the sense that i really am now a caricature on the internet where people project their negative views about women and feminism. So I get it on Twitter, I get it on Instagram, I get it through my email because I have to have a contact page that's public so that I can be contacted um, by media and to do my job. I mean, it's a part of my job. Um, I, yeah, I'm a Canadian white woman who can't speak in public, whether it's a church basement or an amphitheater of 500 people without having a security protocol in place because the level of threat I receive is that heightened uh, and I honestly don't think it's ever gonna go away. Like that's my reality now is that there's this 24 seven surveillance of me as an individual because I've been completely dehumanized. I'm not a person anymore. I'm really a caricature. Um, and so any hatred that men have about women or any hatred they have about feminism, if they see me on the news or they see me out in public, I become uh, sort of a catch all where I have to just hear and take all of it in um, and it's, 24 seven like that. It, this is my life now. My, I'll never get away from it. Hollaback is an international organization dedicated to ending harassment in public space. And so we started and we're first known as an organization that did work around street harassment, but we've realized that the internet is the new sidewalk and that public space is now digital as well. And so we have a project called Heart Mob, 
And the real core of it is that oftentimes these attacks on women and queer folks and marginalized folks are targeted. It's a mob attack where people are organized and they target you. Uh, and so the idea is what if we flip that on its head and we created a mob of people who come to your rescue, who come to support you, who come to fight fire with some water um, and some kindness. And so we have a platform where people who are harassed can seek out tangible support. Uh, and then people who are privileged and who don't face harassment can join the platform, be vetted, and they can become heart mobbers who come to support people who've identified themselves as targets. And so it's really about creating the internet that we want to see uh, and giving people a glimmer of hope that there are safe spaces that we can create on the internet. But more than that, for me, it's about equipping bystanders with tools on how to intervene. Because when it comes to online harassment, generally there are people witnessing it, especially when it's on social media, and people sometimes think they're helping, but they make it worse. And so it's about giving people tools on how to intervene without uh, escalating the situation.